We also are, are delighted, I'm sure, to, to uh, talk, ask questions, sure. have any discussions, or whatever you, you, uh, you want to have. So. Well, I've brought a, a reel, which we will see tomorrow, I think. Uh, uh, the, it starts off with Mighty Joe Young. Maybe if some of you may not have seen Mighty Joe Young. I don't know. But we can run just the first part of it too long, otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Well, this, of course, was done way back in 1945 and 6 and 7, and uh, we made Marty Joe. But we can. Uh, have some questions about it later. If you know. Take a character, 
three-dimensional animated model and combine it with people. This first effort, of course, big effort, was The Lost World, which most of you have seen, I suppose. It's on Laserdisc today. And uh, I think that was one of the first uh, films of its time where you really had leading characters that were animated. And then, of course, King Kong was his greatest time. And that set me off. And uh, I haven't been the same since I saw it. <laughs> so uh, the snowball rolls on. Well, I understand a lot of you have seen so many of our films over the years and have started your career, so it keeps rolling on. But I don't think there was another person, unless someone can mention it, that uh, they may have experimented in Europe with after Georges Millier, but uh, there was Trinka, of course, and uh, some of the early ones in Europe, uh, Sterovich. But O'Brien, I think, was the first leading man in America to develop dimensional animation into an entertainment form. And uh, I think we all owe great debt to him for that. But uh, I had the great pleasure of working with him on uh, Mighty Joe Young and Marion Cooper. They were quite unusual characters. <laughs> and. Uh, I'll always remember that. Are there, are there any questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, the work you did for Mighty Joe Young, I think, in some cases, is better than what Willis O'Brien was doing on King Kong. Were there a lot of difference, differences in the armatures? Uh, between well, they were much smaller. The work in King Kong, of course, progressed from the lost world and was a more of a refinement. Of course, every picture you make, you try to refine it a little more. And there were quite a number of years went in between The Lost World and King Kong. And O'Brien had a lot of projects that disintegrated. But Kong models were 18 inches high. They were quite a large scale. And Mighty Joe Young was only about 12 inches high. I had always worked with uh, smaller models, and I was supposed to do most of the animation. So I prefer to work with a smaller model, and uh, it's less uh, a problem when you're defying the laws of gravity on one foot. And, that type of thing. and then the other fact that we use rear projection a lot, and if you blow up the image too large, of course you get grain. We didn't have the variety of films they have today, background films, a fine grain, and that type of thing. So we had to, uh, he, his technique, of course, was to paint everything on glass and then cut holes. Uh, like you saw the lion, uh, the, the uh, lion in the cage was put in afterwards, uh, projected in on a little screen in the cage. And then, of course, when uh, he leaped over the broken box, uh, you could see a flash because at that time, if you held a long frame on um, the projector, it would bleach the film. And that's why you see a flash there, but we didn't have the time to redo it for that purpose. So it was except At that time, people weren't as critical as they are today. So the lion was, <laughs> was uh, a background Yeah, we had uh, three pieces of glass, eight by ten feet, with animation table in the, between the foreground glass and the and then we had the miniature lion cage with a little white screen where we projected the lion. Then when 